and uh, I'll call the meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. Uh, I want to um, welcome our uh, guest, Leanna Gant, um, tonight and, uh, and members of the public and Jean. And um, I think that as part of item one, which is to amend if necessary and then accept the agenda, I would like to elevate the, or whatever, move up the discussion of uh, 5C, native plants and pollinator pathway resolution um, to just under public comment. So, so actually, I would like to also move I up to that also so that Leanna can give us an update on sustainable CT. Good idea. So it will go one, two, three, four, five C I. Yep. And then motion to approve as amended. Does anyone else have any other amendments? Okay. Okay, so Melissa has moved to um, to approve the agenda as amended. Here comes Liddy. Do I have a second? Carol or Wendy, you have to second. Second. Thank you. Carol. And all in favor, please raise your hand. Carol, you can say aye. Aye. And any opposed? And I'm not seeing any opposed. So that motion carries. Thank you. Uh, welcome, Liddy. Thank you. <laughs> uh, OK, the next item on the agenda is to um, amend, if necessary, and then accept the minutes um, from our meeting last month of February 9th. Does anyone have any amendments to make to the minutes? I do not. Motion to accept the minutes from February 9th, 2022, as written. Thank you, Gurney, for the minutes. You're welcome. Can I have a second, please? Second. Can I give Carol a second again? All in favor? I did. Second. I heard it. Uh, please raise your hand. Aye. In favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. <clears throat> Any opposed? And seeing none, that motion carries. Okay, so we are gonna move right into the treasurer's report. I believe I sent that around to you all. Uh, there are no changes from last month. Thank you, Liddy. Okay, just making notes at the same time as, uh, as meeting moderating. So. <clears throat> Um, let me move on to, thank you, Liddy. Let me move on to item four on the agenda, which is public comment. Uh, we do have um, a few members of the public here tonight. Uh, would anyone like to make a comment? I'm Miranda's fine, also thanks. here. Miranda's also like here for um, sustainable CT. Could you identify the people, the public? Well, so we have, we have several people who are attending here to, for part of the discussion on 5C and I, and those are Leanna Gant, Miranda Lovato, Jean Speck, and Donna is attending as a member of the public, is how I see it. Yep, you're right. Thanks. Okay, okay great. So let's dive right in. Um, 5C is native plants and the pollinator pathway resolution, uh, which we began discussing at, um, at, at last month's meeting. Um, Melissa, you've done the most work on that. So I'm going- Oh yeah, I wanted to update you all that um, at 10 o'clock this morning, I attended the Kent Sustainable CT team meeting and they unanimously accepted our resolution. So now we have Kent Land Trust, Kent Sustainable CT, Kent Conservation Commission. And then just an hour ago, I heard from Nancy Schaefer of the Garden Club and their, the Garden Club unanimously accepted our resolution. So we will be presenting at the next Board of Selectmen meeting, which is on the 17th of March at 6.30. Yes, 6.30. 
and I submitted to Jean the resolution again for inclusion in the um, packet for the Board of Selectmen meeting. Great. And then today I also submitted the connection to the Ken um, Pollinator Pathway page, and I've listed as um, collaborators the Kent Conservation Commission. So there will be a link that goes right to our Kent Conservation page when that page goes live. When that page is what? Live. Oh. When it gets turned on. So it, they will I help. I just didn't hear the word. It. Sorry, I just didn't hear the word. Yeah. So if you if you go to the Pollinator Pathway um, website now, Liddy, they have uh, a list of Connecticut's towns that are doing work on Pollinator Pathway, but some of those towns have a hyperlink and uh, and Kent did not until well, and still does not. Uh, We're not listed at all right now. We're not at all listed. So we will be listed and then we will have a hyperlink with photos and links to all of our partners, including mm -hmm. the Conservation Commission, the Land Trust and anyone else, the library and anyone else who has a page. Yeah, there's probably some lag time. It's a, it's a volunteer led organization. Yep. Uh, coming out of the um, Norwalk River Watershed Association. So, um, but it should be, should be live, hopefully live by the time things start growing and people really want to consult it. Um, thanks for all of that work. Um, so- well, uh, Are you going to um, provide uh, a copy of this also to the Department of Public Works so they can read through it and if their input may be at some So meeting. as part of the Board of Selectmen's meeting, they will definitely be part of that conversation. And we will discuss as a land trust, the Kent Land Trust, um, probably on Monday at our staff meeting, we'll just discuss how we're gonna um, go about presenting to the Board of Selectmen. So still yeah, I, I to be decided. It's, it's an important point, Yos, uh, that you raise because um, I think that we all, acknowledge that uh, this could be, and, and we don't really know, frankly, uh, but it could be a substantial change in practice for the way that the town manages its lands under its control. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I, I feel like I don't have a very good idea of what the town currently does and what potential changes it would need to make in order to comply with the resolution and what the potential costs to the town might be in connection with that. And I feel like those questions will most definitely be raised in the Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, and so um, so actually, uh, Gina, I was wondering if, uh, you know, what the best way to go about that would be. I mean, the, the I don't know how much mowing the town does uh, in, in the month of May or before June 1, but that would be, you know, to not mow town hall uh, would, I think, probably be a change in practice uh, to not spray any pesticides or herbicides, probably also a rather large change in practice, uh, the conversion of lawn, you know, some of the items that are in the resolution are, um, you know, are, are, are um, different, you know, are changes. Uh, that uh, we would be really happy to see. So we're thrilled that sustain that the uh, sustainability team has come along uh, with us on this. Um, but I, I feel like we are missing the, the knowledge of just how much of a change this might be for the town and whether or not it would need time to ramp up. Uh, sure, Liana, go ahead and. You know, I just, I just had a thought about the mowing around town hall and somebody, can correct me on this, but my understanding is that we, we actually lease that um, land. It's not owned by the town. And I'm wondering if there are any covenants or restrictions in any of those leases that might require mowing or a certain kind of maintenance, if anybody has looked into that. Good point. I, I just well, don't know about the town does own quite a bit because we I, John Casey and I did walk the property when the Conservation Commission planted all those trees, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago, eight years ago now. I don't even remember. <laughs> they run together. But there is like a, a 
good yeah. amount of property that is town owned. So I, I don't think we're going to have a problem with that. Jane, can you find right. out? The town, the property around the town hall is owned mm -hmm. by the town. And how far does it go? Does it go how far close to the post office? Um, I'd have to look at the property line. I think yeah. it, it's on this, it's on, it includes the tree, right, Donna? Yes. It includes, I think it's on this side goes, of where that stream goes through. It goes up to the brook. I mean, the pond. The pond is part of the um, post office. Post office. So basically, if you're looking at town hall, what's mowed is what they own. And so. same on the other side, where our trees are that we planted, some are dead now. <laughs> That's kind of our property, but right after is not. We were right on the property line when I walked it with John Casey. Right. And also to the uh, woods line in the back, like the 440 um, contour line where it gets steep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And there's wetlands back there too, so. Right. So no, I did kind of, I explained to the conservation, uh, the sustainability team about how um, Ptolemy discussed, you know, mowing beauty paths or whatever he, you know, he called. And so there is some, you know, there is some way that, that may could be handled with minimal mowing, but still keep things neat looking and, and not, not we make it so, so unlived in kind of look, but still look. And so just a question, if that's okay for me to ask, um, the field, so the ball fields that would be used for, likely soccer would be happening there in May. I'm not 100% sure, but is there any, um, yeah. is it okay to, may, to mow the, the fields that, you know, the athletic fields? So I think that these are the questions that we'll need to figure out. So I would envision that, that the Board of Selectmen meeting that we are opening the conversation okay. and starting to outline what this means for the town because okay. uh, the worst outcome would be if the Board of Selectmen just rejected it outright because it seemed too hard to do. So it, it's really important to get a read on what this actually means for the town. And it probably, you know, there was consideration of each of the items, you know, one by one to really, you know, and that I'm not saying that like in the board of selectmen meeting that we need to consider the items one by one, but I think that it would be important for someone at the town level, you know, someone who is responsible for municipal management of land to consider what each of those things mean. But I think to your point, Jean, we're not asking for the playing fields to be unkempt where it takes, it, where weeds grow and then it takes more to regain them in the future. We're, we're talking more like Emory Park and, and places that, that really- Excuse me, but isn't are, that something that you have to take up with the new park and rec director he's in charge of the playing fields and the parks well the the dpw mows that all but it would be we would definitely absolutely they would be part of the conversation mm -hmm. for sure and the the parks already uh, are um handled organically right because uh, doesn't state law say that you can't use pesticides on uh, right. parks? Yeah, we use so the the town has experience with uh, treating lawns organically, so they can expand that to other lawns. Um, that's at least one thing. I imagine. Yep. And then it says, um, "Now, therefore, be it resolved." It says to encourage all residents in the municipality. It doesn't say, say, uh, say that it binds them. So um, we, we just work towards accomplishing as many of these as possible, but we we don't expect uh, them to- That's um, not- to, to do everything. I'm to cut you off, but that's not the intention of the resolution. 
the intention of the resolution is for the town to abide by those things and to encourage other residents to do it, right? So that's where that encourage part comes in. And I would say that Jean has started and it sounded like from earlier yeah. today that she will continue with her um, newsletter. She brought out No Mo May, even though it's still March and she plans to do that again in the next two months. So I, I would say the the messaging is gonna be important for that encourage, but I think that Jean is on target with her um, way she is approaching it in our, in the flavor. So this month it was a, in the, did you know, section, which is way, 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 way down below the fold next month, it will be much, much higher. And then may will really be a reminder of like, Hey, we're on the, I think it's the 5th of may. Um, still have a chance to, you know, get the rest of the month in on mode. Yes, Leanna. Sorry, I have another question and I don't want to be a downer about this, but it just kind of made me think because uh, Dan and I, we do our own yard, but I know there are any number of people who hire yard men to work on their yards and many of those yard maintenance people are local people and you're kind of asking them not to work in May. And I don't know how, you know, the economics of that for those individuals and their businesses, you know, there's a conflict there and I, I don't know if that's been considered. I can respond to that a little bit because we've identified that same conflict. And Leanna, what this is about, and it's not going to happen overnight, which is actually why I'm, I'm, you know, sort of pressing this because it's happening a little faster than I imagined what is, is you know, would happen. Uh, you know, I really don't think it would do any of us any good to have an adopted resolution that nobody can follow. And I also don't want to see a resolution that nobody feels that they can support. Um, with respect to, you know, the landscaping industry, uh, of course, we don't want to put people out of business, but what we do want to do is encourage a healthy ecosystem. And there's a lot of land care that is still involved in doing just that. So, you know, we've gotten to this point uh, in America where people see a lawn as beautiful, right? I don't know why. But that is what has happened over time is the aesthetic has changed to a point where people look at a lawn and go, oh, that looks the way that it's supposed to look when you're caring for your yeah. land. Uh, but we know that a lawn is a desert. It is not food for any insects, birds. It's not good for the environment and ultimately it's not good for us. And so over a period of maybe like a decade, Shorter would be great because we're running out of time, but what we hope to do is really change the aesthetic where people can look at their land and say, I have a really healthy yard and it's not a lawn. Um, so just getting back to the point about what our landscapers can do, we don't want them to be mowing mowing, mowing, mowing all of the time, but we do want them to be caring for our native plants and our plantscapes. And there are things that they can do in the spring, including preparing your perennial beds or, you know, uh, you know, I'm like trying to, we, we thought of a few, but there are, there are well, plenty of things that landscaping companies can do if they're not using their incredible gas mowers to mow your lawn or their gas leaf blowers to blow leaves out of a garden bed where they're killing lots of, you know, larval stages of insects. And on a related kind of point, um, I, I, are there any homeowner associations in Kent um, that might have rules about lawn maintenance and things like that. I know I, where I grew up in Florida, there were places that had, I mean, there were enormous numbers of rules in many communities about cutting grass. I don't know if there are any homeowners associations in Kent and if anybody knows, maybe they would have to be. Kirkwood. Kirkwood's where, where Yost lives there. Yeah, there's I live in one. Uh, we have rules, but it doesn't say uh, much about the uh, common lawns. Uh, about the maintenance of that. It doesn't say that you have to keep it short, but we do have a lawn mowing company that does keep it short and people do expect it. And in the past, we've talked about uh, leaving part of it, uh, let it, letting it grow up, but then other people didn't like it. And so that was shut down. 
and I don't see that changing anytime soon. And a, a lot of these um, companies, currently that you say that will uh, instead do perennial beds, and so they their main thing is lawn mowing, and they don't want to miss out on lawn mowing in May. Um, so I, it's not going to be that easy. Um, I wish that uh, a lot of them would be more sensitive, but um, and we acknowledge it, that we acknowledge it that it's not going to be easy. Yeah. We also that? acknowledge that you might end up paying more come June first to get your lawn mowed because you didn't do it at all in May. Yeah, and and Plus it's, that it's might not, be the case. It's not good for long grass either if you let it grow too long and then cut too much off. That's not good for the grass. Right, mow high yeah. and let it lie. Right, that's the that's the mnemonic yeah. for a uh, healthy lawn. And I'd say and if you get water. clovers and dandelions, leave them. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, so don't don't treat them. At least we don't um, use any herbicides and pesticides and, and, and not even uh, fertilizers. So. But Norfolk and Cornwall and Goshen are all doing, like I told you this morning, they've all contacted me to say, hey, we want to use your sign. So, I mean, others are thinking about it and that's a great thing. So we're excited. All right, are we good? Are we good on, uh, on native I. plants and pollinator pathway? Yep. Okay. Good. So let's move on to it and uh, to um, 5i, uh, which I had as an update, but I had that before I knew that we were going to um, actually have the team with us. So I appreciate your being here. Uh, you know, maybe it's best to have the update straight from you, Leanna, as the chair of that group. Okay, hey, um, I'm not exactly sure because this is our first time here um, what people know about our group, but Jean Speck is in our group. So is Miranda Lovato. We have another member, Joanne Wasty, but she is out of the country right now. Um, we sadly lost a member. She's dealing with a serious health crisis um, for the last while now. And so we're hoping she'll want to rejoin us when she's has hopefully had a full recovery. Um, Sustainable Connecticut um, is uh, an organization, it's not run by the state, but it's a state level organization. Um, it's, uh, I, I kind of wish they'd named it Vibrant Connecticut because most people hear Sustainable Connecticut and they think it's all environmental. And that's really just a, a sliver of it. Um, what their goal is, is to, you know, they're, they give you a, a variety of projects <clears throat> from which to choose that um, all contribute to a vibrant and, and uh, healthy community. Um, projects range from the arts to commerce, to tourism, to homelessness prevention, to affordable housing, yes, to the environment. Um, you know, there's just pretty much anything and everything you can think of that a vibrant community might like to lay claim to. Um, and then the way it works as we complete projects, and these are not little projects, they tend to be quite extensive. Um, you accumulate points. And as you accumulate points, you can get your town a certification and they have bronze level and silver level. And I think there are some communities that may be even working toward gold, but we're fairly new. Um, of course, we were pandemic born, which is never helpful. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it, it's, it's, we're trying. It's, um, you know, ladies, <coughs> basically it's been ladies in the community who are volunteering and Jean is kind of ushering us through on the town government side. Um, many of the towns that have implemented this, um, it, it's almost, it, a lot of the projects involve town government doing things, um, you know, like modernizing their fleet, things like that, um, making it more energy efficient. So, you know, it has to be done in partnership with town government. And I like to say that many of the projects are town government in partnership with some help from people. <laughs> So, um, so we're always looking for new members if you know anybody who's interested. Um, but that's uh, what we are in a nutshell. 
Um, right now, uh, we are trying to get off the ground uh, work on an, a, a public arts project. Um, Joanne, um, one of our members is a, uh, her, she's an arts educator. And so she's trying to take the laboring or on that. We've submitted materials for to Sustainable Connecticut to get credit for several recycling projects at the transfer station. Um, we've been sifting through some things that the town has already done, um, seeing what we can submit there. Um, I know Jean and I um, and Miranda have read, and well, all of us actually have attended um, some equity workshops because there's always an eye towards equity with these projects. And Melissa is very, uh, gave us an amazing um, presentation this morning on the work that's been done on pollinator pathways. Much of it matches with the, the sustainable Connecticut um, actions on that that can be submitted. So we're, we're, we're slowly moving along um, within our constraints. And uh, you know, we've got a nice team at the state level who've worked with us, although sadly we just lost our liaison there. So hopefully we'll get somebody new assigned to us uh, in the near future. Um, our, I guess our biggest uh, new thing that's coming up is next week. Um, Sustainable Connecticut at the state level, along with the Nature Conservancy, approached us a little while back. They have some workshops that they've been doing on community resilience in light of uh, climate change and, and whatnot. And um, they wanted to host a workshop and they, they've been going around to the different towns and uh, doing these little workshops. And so it, we, we, we are kind of facilitating it. We're not designing it. We're not running it. We're just, you know, they, we just, they said, they asked, if, is, asked us if we would host it. We said, sure. And they gave us kind of a list of um, people in the town by title that should be invited and uh, we're going from there and that's going to be taking place on Tuesday morning. And we're looking forward to that. And uh, Jean, Miranda, if you have anything to add. I do not. Uh, I, um, I, that was a pretty good overview. I'm pretty new to the group, so I'm still kind of absorbing everything and, and learning. So no, I think that was, that was a good overview. So I think yeah, maybe yeah. it would be helpful um, if we explain to you what we do as a conservation commission, um, you know, and and I remember uh, maybe as much as four years ago or, you know, something, maybe even longer, I don't know, when, when Sustainable CT uh, was first born, if you will, uh, we looked at the program and we looked at the, excuse me, conservation and uh, you know, land and water and recycling and all of like the environmental sustainability components of that and concluded really that we were probably 70 to 80 percent of the way there with what we were already doing. Uh, but where um, the Conservation Commission felt a little out of its element or, you know, perhaps not as staffed, as well staffed as it needed to be um, with respect to sustainable CT um, was codifying all of it. So assembling the written documentation needed to prove what we were doing. The Conservation Commission is a, um, is a, a municipal commission uh, and our role is <clears throat> really fourfold. Uh, number one, we're there to be an advisor on things that are environmentally related to the other commissions and departments in town and to the staff of the town. So uh, we don't have um, regular th regulatory authority to, you know, be, uh, you know, be voting on permits, um, but we do have uh, this advisory kind of a guidance uh, and oversight role where, um, where we might get involved to talk about the environmental aspects of, uh, of different applications that are before the town. We put together um, an open space inventory and that has included uh, as a separate document, a natural and cultural resources inventory 
uh, which is a publication that, that Wendy uh, worked really hard on and others of us have chipped in on, but Wendy is really the, the, you know, the person who um, did the majority of the work to put that document together. It's on the town's website and it catalogs. And let's, you know, let's get Liddy in there. She and was Liddy. the other half. Look, it's, it's impressive. And the work that was put into it has proven to be really valuable because the people in the town love it and they consult it. Uh, it. We're in the process of updating it, but that is one of the functions of a conservation commission and most conservation commissions in towns uh, in Northwest Connecticut have done the same kind of a natural and cultural resources inventory. Uh, that document also is referenced frequently uh, you know, by other commissions, uh, including the PNZ as they're updating the um, the POCD, which I hope you've encountered that acronym uh, in your work in the plan of conservation and development. Um, in addition to the, uh, the the NCRI and the open space plan, we are a commission that provides education throughout the community on things that are environmentally related. And in our educational efforts, we've done quite a lot of work on recycling in the community. We've conducted programs that are not just educational, but also practical. Uh, we have a, a program where um, anyone in town can borrow temporary recycling bins for their outdoor events or their indoor events. And we have some of those bins in the Kent Community Center. So when people rent that out, they can be sure to recycle. Um, that's, uh, you can find information about that on our webpage of the Kent Conservation Commission. Uh, we do a program every single spring uh, to clean up every single road in the town. And that is an effort that has been, um, you know, captained by, in fact, almost entirely taken care of by Liddy Baker for many, many years. I think she gets more than 95% of our roads cleaned by volunteers who take bags and go out and clean up the sides of the roads. In addition to that village cleanup, that town cleanup, I should say, because it is townwide, uh, we do a program for Earth Day, uh, generally at the library for children. We have helped the library to purchase an entire set of environmental books. So they have a special section that is conservation related in both the adult section and the children's section. We also participate each year in the school's Arbor Day programming. And we participate by helping the school to purchase a tree, to plant a tree, to help them select which tree to plant, and to participate in the programming for the kids on the day that it happens. Uh, at the transfer station, uh, we periodically will table, usually on America Recycles Day. We have worked with the town to talk about how to improve collection of recyclables about how we might be able to improve the signage there so people are more compliant. We did the preliminary work to study an organics program. That was about three to four years ago. So we, uh, oh, and we've gotten a grant through the state to, uh, to improve things at our transfer station. Um, so there are- We've got the trails book. The trails, the trails book. And the recycling bins on Main Street and the temporary recycling bins. There's a lot. <laughs> We're pretty There's active. Lot. But, but that, that's our role in the community. Um, that's the way that we can be helpful to you because you do not need to do that work yourself. You've got a commission. Can I add a couple of more things that we're doing? Good, can I talk about it? Because uh, I think we'll go ahead at some point uh, we're going to put together a workshop, a talk, whatever you want to call it, perhaps in September on all the different uh, residential solar possibilities they are, including solar um, electric cars, but the whole, there's a whole new program on battery backups. There's, there's a whole lot of stuff that we're going to bring to the public that hasn't gotten involved. I, I was quite surprised to discover the other day that George Hetson, who is the most technically engrossed guy I've ever met, he doesn't have solar yet because he said, I just haven't had the time to find out about it. And I thought, this is our audience. There are a lot of people out there who might 
be happy to have solar if somebody could just introduce them to the right people and the right data. So that's one program we're having. And uh, um, well, I guess that's that's the main one. Right, so. and Wendy, Wendy is our solar uh, guru uh, because she was the person who was able to access and figure out the Green Bank and to bring a study to the town to try and, uh, you know, try and bring more solar arrays to municipal buildings. <laughs> Uh, that is an effort that didn't that only really resulted in one solar array. Uh, but you know we have all of the data. So when things change and when opportunities become available, I'm sure that we'll be able to put more of them online. Well, it's, it's going to and happen at Center School, school, school right? is going to get their program this summer, yeah. and I forget what the the savings anticipated for their electric bills, but it's huge, and they're very pleased about it. And they get a new roof at the same time. And don't forget the uh, the the birthplace of the Western uh, the Western Connecticut Clean Air Action Group. So uh, the Kent Conservation Commission was the place where we initially discussed the uh, potential threats from Cricket Valley uh, the, the the Cricket Valley Natural Gas Plant, and it was members of this Conservation Commission that split off into a task force so that they could be a little bit more dynamic in addressing that challenge which ultimately led to uh, the installation uh, you know, in Kent and also in many other towns of air monitors to try and establish a baseline uh, that we could then use to present evidence if there were negative air quality impacts from Cricket Valley. So uh, there really are a ton of things and I guess, and, and maybe there are more that I'm forgetting that more people can chime in, but I, I guess what I'm wondering is whether it might not make sense for uh, when your committee is ready to do the sections, do the components, because I think it's there's like different modules or different areas, right? So when you're ready to do the um, the areas that address environmental concerns, I maybe you should come here and interview us. What I'm thinking is maybe um, as a matter in the first instance to um, have a point, maybe somebody from your group to look at the, they call them action items, the environmental action items on the, on the Sustainable Connecticut webpage and see what you think you've already done. That um, is the part where we had, where we did not have the bandwidth. So okay. I, I think what was- It's a matter of just sitting down with you once. I just came off the New Milford uh, Sustainable Connecticut bid, which, which got a very high mark. I think uh, in September. And so I've been there and done that uh, very recently. And I could probably talk with you. We could just sit down, two of us or four of us, whatever. Wonderful. I would very much like to do that. Um, so okay. we, we'll get in touch and, uh, and see what you think. Um, because like I said, a lot of these, they're not little tiny projects. They're big, they involve often almost always some component of town government being in, in involved in it in one way or another financially or committing right. other you know human resources something but as Connie we, said we are, it already exists here so you just right. to frame we, it right we right. are town government mm -hmm. so I, I hear what you're saying and yeah. uh, I guess what I would say back is that, you know, the involvement of town government is the, the town's conservation commission, which uh, is appointed for exactly this purpose. Okay, very good. Leanne, have you looked into uh, getting an intern to help you with some of this work? No, we have Do you not. see a possibility for that? I, I was talking to them about high that. high school students for a project. See, Leanna, it all comes around in circles. I was telling you about that this morning at your meeting. So, yes. Mm -hmm. so I think the COG, at least last year, had interns to loan for that purpose. There is actually also a sustainable CT um, fellow at in each of the COGs. And that, I think that who was, that's who you were mentioning before, Leanna, right? Who was oh, just Tim, left. So we so did we, have a we, COG person. We did have, you know, he kind of holds our hand because navigating that website and submitting things for credit is no trivial activity. So um, he he's also the person that we can go to and say, 
if we do this, this is, are we on the right track? Can you look at what we've done? Where do we have holes? Is this adequate? Have we, are we deficient in some way? So we do have a shepherd there, um, but he's not going to do the projects for us, but he can review what we're doing um, and tell us if we are on the right track and if our submissions are adequate. Um, and if, um, you know, so that we don't waste time, money, effort. Um, but he's not there anymore. We're waiting for them to assign us someone new, but that wouldn't be somebody working with us on a project. That's just somebody who kind of watches over us. So. Liana, my, my experience with you know, Milford was that, yes, the, this list of things and getting your award is very nice, but it also has the potential to give you more grant opportunities. So it's, it's a, uh, you know, there is a basis to do this. It's right. not just gold stars no, on it. The, um, the, the um, affordable housing report, um, which is actually part of the, the, the state. My understanding is that the state is requiring all the towns to submit affordable housing plans. And that grew out of sustainable Connecticut actually. And um, the grant money for that was from this, just, uh, well, I, it was certainly listed on the Sustainable Connecticut page. And I know, and Jean, how much did they get for that? 8,000 some dollars or something? Um, just shy of 15,000 for the- Oh, 15,000. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, we, we do, we, they do provide us with grant resources if we wanna undertake this or that project that we could apply for, so. So don't forget the Chamber of Commerce when you're doing all this. Mm -hmm. They can be put to work as well. Right. Um, Wendy, it it's might make sense <laughs> for you um, if there was a point person shepherding this all through in New Milford. I wonder if that would be a good resource for Leanna. I, I know that uh, in Roxbury, uh, my friend Kim Cartwright did it. Yeah, it was Julie Bailey. Julie Bailey. She'll overwhelm you. I mean, just be prepared. <laughs> she, would call, she used to call me at 630 in the morning. And Catherine <laughs> right. Frygang. So you should be contacting yeah. Catherine Frygang because she lives in Kent also and Cornwall and she did it in Cornwall. Wait. Same. I'd hold back. I know, but I think that that's, that's kind of the person you need. Okay. okay so anyway, I, that, those, those colleagues will probably be helpful to you if you want to see how they approached uh, this cataloging of what the town uh, already does and pursuit of the things that the town is not doing yet. Um, okay, well, I think that is that all for tonight. We really appreciate your endorsement of the, uh, the resolution. Uh, and if you wanna know more about Pollinator Pathway, uh, about anything that the Conservation Commission does uh, or about anything that some of the various groups that we represent do that are conservation related, uh, please feel free to, to reach out. Thank you, Connie, for the, all that information. Thank you indeed. That was very informative and useful. Um, okay, good. Well, I, I really appreciate you being here. Um, if you are interested, you're welcome to stay. Uh, if you have to go someplace, we will not be offended because we've been through the items that we, um, you know, that, that we purposely uh, moved up on the agenda so that we could talk with you first. I am going to sign off. I have um, my son home for spring break. He's got his girlfriend here and I, I'm trying to <laughs> do everything. So um, anyway, thank you again for having us. We really appreciate the invitation and um, look forward to working with you in the future. And likewise, take care. Okay. Thank you all. Stick around. Um, okay, good. So let's let's move into 5A, which is um, the discussion of a prospective ordinance that might enable Kent to purchase open space and other land. Uh, I hope you had an opportunity uh, to um, read Wendy's report that I said around earlier today. Um, Wendy, do you want to talk about it at all or present it? Um, no, I, I think it's just, um, it just requires some careful reading and then uh, we have to figure out how, how to sell it. 
Uh, it's not an uncommon thing to have a, a, an open space fund now. Many towns are doing it. They have different ways of raising the money, uh, but it is endorsed by many state and larger regional organizations as, the, as one of the very best ways to have the financial facility to buy land when either when you know you need it or when it is just too important to pass up. Uh, and it's often when land becomes available, there isn't time to uh, try to raise money. Things move very fast. So that is the one of the primary uh, advantages of having an open space fund. And uh, I did speak to Donna. She gave me numbers of, uh, or no, I guess it was, um, uh, what's her name, Herbst, uh, who told me how much, Barbara, how much money comes in and what, what it would cost the town in ex if we did, if we took uh, uh, sums of money that came with the purchase of new land, or there are all kinds of ways. But I think everybody needs to study this up close. They need to look at some of the, what other towns have done. I think the early, Kent started trying to do this way back in, well, depending on which version you read, but at least in 2007, and they have raised the question over and over again, and uh, the more conservative part of town, or the, let's say the people who live on fixed incomes, let's put it that way, uh, really see this as just another way to get their taxes to rise, but I think the problem is we haven't done a very good job of selling it. I think that isn't a necessary uh, result of having an open space uh, purchasing plan. But I think everybody needs to study the documents I provided. Um, maybe look up some of your own. There are many towns I mentioned that you can go to there, see how they do. Uh, Goshen is called the the uh, gold standard by many towns. They've had their open space plan for a lot of years and you can see they've done, they've, they've made very good use of it. Uh, hey, I, wait, I'm, I'm sorry, can we go back on that for a second? Has Goshen actually made a purchase through its open space plan? Yes. Do you know what they purchased? I can't remember now, but I've gone back and looked at those lists and they, they do list things. I know that, the uh, selectman who, who devised that uh, said he, his one regret was that he didn't include as uh, potential places to spend the money, land trusts and uh, affordable housing. So it was really only for recreation and um, uh, pri you know, favorite town space. I can't tell you how much was spent, but it's there. They do, they, they, accumulated money for 10 years. So I think you're probably thinking maybe they never spent it. I think they didn't spend it as much as they thought they would, but I believe Can they we have. have someone from Goshen come and speak to us, please. Could we? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think so, but I imagine somebody from the LTA or somebody would be even better. Uh, well, I, I just hear I, I can't do it, but the, um, the Trust for Public Land. Trust for, yeah, yeah, GPL. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, you know, that's why we had them come out several years ago uh, was so they could give exactly this kind of a presentation. Um, I, I, think I know that so, I really they're eager to come see us. But, I, you know, I, I don't By know. By the way, in, in 2018, Goshen bought a 53-acre uh, parcel Thank with you. Uh, funds from this uh, fund. And what did uh, they got? And there? you say... What? For what purpose? Fact, there was a town meeting that approved a 53 acre uh, parcel purchase in 2018. For what purpose? But Playing fields, was it? Something. For, that was, I think that was for open space. Um, although they allow it for other purposes too. But when the, you call the Goshen one the gold standard, but I, I don't. Uh, Agree with it personally. Okay, no, I that was said several to others. A couple there, of there are several others that I thought. I, I think they've done better. better. Yeah, they've done better. With Can it. we let's do one at a time, please? 
well, I'm just saying, I, I don't think it is the best. Um, I, Washington, I think that, the town of Washington has done a good job. Yeah. Uh, and they have, uh, I think right now they may have shut, shut down for a while because they haven't had a piece of property come up. But I mean, the money that they put in it that's still there is will stay there in perpetuity until they need it. And is then Washington's will... open to everything or what can Washington use theirs for? Because there is a piece of property they're going to town meeting this month to purchase the Erickson building for their ambulance, um, new uh, ambulance building. That might be it, but the problem is there are just so many examples here. Uh, I didn't know you were asking for specifics. Did you arrive at one methodology that you thought was better than another that we should pursue? Uh, well, I, I, yeah, I thought there is a, let me, let me go back and find a letter from, uh, uh, from Herbst about what she said about this. Um, it seems like taxes. Oh, there's a letter from, no. from Amy Patterson at uh, Kent Conservation Organization. Said planners from Marlboro and Plainville responded that their towns have funds. No other responses yet to my query. I mean, it's very hard to find these things out, except calling one by one. Uh, TPL gave me a spreadsheet of Kent conservation measures uh, and what towns were doing it. Um, is that it's Amy the real estate interests that also object. That's another thing you'll run into. Honey, is that Amy Patterson from CLCC? CLCC, yeah. Uh, the can, so the we can certainly reach out to her. Um, council. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, without question, there are a number of towns that have these. I think the question for Kent, and and you know, I also think that. There are people within Kent that believe that this would be, uh, you know, that this would be a really good option, an opportunity uh, for our town to have. Uh, the question of selling it to the people is going to come down to the numbers, and that we really need to, you know, this is what we learned from TPL. We need to figure out uh, because it's not true, uh, and it makes you look really not credible if you say that uh, that the municipal expenses for property when they're developed are higher than the expenses that you pay um, in, in taxes uh, in order to purchase a property like this, right? So if there's a, if our taxes go up, uh, I, we're not really, we can't really give the argument that, uh, that that will be offset in savings uh, that will make our taxes come down. Uh, first of all, if we're paying into a fund, that doesn't mean that the town has purchased a property and gotten it off of the, the uh, you know, and, and it protected it from development, right? So if we are paying into a fund, the town might buy property and use it for recreational facilities or use it for other things that might actually have municipal expenses attached to them, plus, we learned from the town of Roxbury that um, your expenses in connection with businesses uh, are different than your expenses in connection with residents. And so depending on how your town is made up and what open parcels you have and what open parcels you might protect, that equation is different. So it, it's not really just as it, it's not as simple as saying, you know, whatever uh, whatever you pay in taxes will be offset from the savings in taxes uh, for not having developed those parcels. Uh, by the way, here's from between 2010 and 2022, uh, the town collected in conveyance tax 773,799. So that's close to $800,000. And they collected another a uh, hundred thousand in 490, 490 penalties. And that money, you know, in another town might be sitting in a, in its own little expense account. And um, did this money from the conveyance tax 
that was started under the um, CIA, the uh, Community Investment Act, and it was meant to be used for open space, um, uh, agriculture and uh, affordable housing. Um, and it has gone into the general fund instead. So I think you might be mixing your programs, Joost. Isn't the, it? The, convenience. Well, some of the, 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 the articles at the very back of Wendy's paper that talk about this initiative that uh, the Connecticut Land Conservation Council is trying to put forward um, is really, that's a conveyance tax a uh, pot of money that they're suggesting should be used for stewardship and acquisition and go to the state. Uh, conveyance no, that's taxes, a, CIA is- That's not existing yet. Oh, CIA goes to the state. That is not a conveyance tax that goes to the town. So I don't know enough about the way that town transfers work to, uh, to know, you know, what- to know what the conveyance tax might be, but that portion that goes to the municipality, Barbara Herbst was quite clear, goes to our general budget and our general operating expenses. And she was also clear that any uh, any movement of that, you know, any any diversion of those conveyance taxes would just mean that the town would need to make it up in another way, which means an increase of taxes. Right, but it was instituted specifically as a fee on uh, land tra on property transfers, um, and part of it went to the town clerk, and part of it went to the state, part of it went to the town, and this was money meant to go into purposes like what we are discussing, plus affordable housing. Um, but so this is not the um, public option that the CLC is pushing for now and that hasn't passed yet. It's, it's an earlier conveyance tax on a trans uh, a tax or a fee on a trend um, on deed. Um, there are at least four ways that towns do this funding. This is a letter from uh, Amy Patterson again. She says some towns approve funding as a line item in their budget. Some have a dedicated fund set up. Some go to referendum to approve allocation of open space funds. And some have a fee in lieu of open space funds set up as part of a subdivision approval process. The breadth of use for the funds varies. If a town is considering conditioning the use of the funds to acquire, well, I can't read part of this, but anyway, um, they, she suggests reading the general statutes, section 4742E to review it. Uh, but it seems like there are many different ways that are, are used in the state. I imagine every, every town would give you a different reason why it works. Okay, so what we need to do is identify what we believe to be the best way that Kent could do this. And then we have to run the numbers so that we can make this palatable to the community. Uh, because, um, you know, that's the question. That is why this has never gained ground before. Uh, and that's, you know, what you, I mean, you've stated that in, in your report, Wendy, that, you know, that. It, it, it's not passing in the community. It's not flying in the community because people don't want their taxes to go up. So I think that if we're, if this is gonna stand any chance, we need to actually stick some numbers on it so that people know. But it has passed in many other Something from the town of Lebanon. Since, since 2006, Lebanon's land preservation program has helped preserve almost 3000 acres of farmland and open space at a town cost of 530,000 or $180 an acre. So that's a different way. Right. So I think part of it, you, you have to look at what's the nature of the space that remains. Uh, you know, the later, by, by postponing this, it just gets more expensive. That's certainly clear. Hebron the has land gets more expensive. Yeah. So, and that means it gets more expensive for us as townspeople. 
to fund this kind of thing through our taxes. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to pass. I'm in support of something like this. But this is why I say what we need to do as a conservation commission, if we're going to get anywhere close, we need to be able to stick some numbers on this because that is going to be the question. How much is it going to cost me? Well, that's what TPL was offering to work with us on. They were going to help us on the financials, as I understood. They just needed to be asked. Uh, no, actually, when we asked them, they said that when the reason that they did that program for us, Wendy, is we asked them to do that. And they said, we won't do that. We'll come and give you a program. No, I'm saying this is what they said to me now. They seem to be, maybe things have changed. Oh, maybe. Or Who's your contact? Really pushing the point. So help. who's your contact? Maybe we can get them to do it. I'll have to pull one of these. I've got so many pieces of paper here, but I will, I will look it up and tell you. Yeah, I mean, that would be great okay. if they do that. Because I don't think any of us are equipped to do these numbers. This is a more complicated question. We also... We mustn't forget that this money can also be used to match state and federal grants. Exactly. Um, we, we pass up on a lot of uh, potential state and federal money if we didn't have any matching grants. Yeah, there are many grants um, that require 50% yeah. town support. Right. But, but Yos, yeah. that goes the other way. It's actually those grants can be used to match the town funds. Yes, that's true. The town could anytime it wants without having a land acquisition fund buy something and gain access to those state and federal grants. Towns are yeah, eligible. The town doesn't have any money set aside for that. No, but if they don't have money set aside, but they can't. what can. I'm saying is you do not need to have a land acquisition fund. You do need to have money. So- Right, so where do you so put yes. that? Going back yeah. to the initial question, it? would it be good for the town to have this money? Yes. Would it be good for the town to have a land acquisition fund? Yes. Is it the only way that the town's ever going to buy buy property? No. Town could the town could bond. The town could go to a hearing. The town could allocate funds that it has. The town could apply for grants. So let's not foreclose the idea that that might happen, even if we fall short of our goal. All right. Yes. Even if we fall short of our goal. We should still encourage the town in every way possible to protect the property that it makes sense for the town to own. But at the same time, we need to know how long does it take to, to raise a bond issue? How many months would that take? I don't know. How, many, how long would it take to uh, go for a grant if you had no money to start with? Time would be lost. That's uh, having money ready to go alters the, the, the landscape, <laughs> literally. The why the Kent Land Trust has a reserve for land protection, so it has strike funding available at any time. And it is a prudent thing for towns to do. So I'm, you know, I think we are all in agreement about that. Uh, and if the best way that we're gonna move forward with this is to have somebody from TBL analyze what it would actually cost, the taxpayers in, in an increased mill rate, then I think that's good. That's one next step to reach out to them and see if they'll do that for us. And I also think that it would be good for our commission to identify what we think is the appropriate mechanism for the town to do this. All right. Uh, and also in a way that time is right now, is something that uh, Connie, you don't want to talk about, but we had this recent development. Yo, don't that, bring it up, that, please. That, don't. No, do not. Dose. Okay. Yos, let me say this right now. But okay? I said that's why because the time is the, right. The, the, Yos, I've been advised by the town attorney to call you uh, out of order if you bring it up. Okay. Okay. I did have a conversation with the town attorney, not to mention that you will have the quick exit of three people on this call and we will no longer have a quorum. Okay. Please do not bring it up. Not even to joke.
Were you going to say something without making reference to that? Oh, me? No, I think Yost was no. actually headed somewhere. Well, no, I, I was just saying this. Well, I can't say it. Now. Okay. So, so one other next... thing, uh, are we going to talk about that um, draft ordinance that I drew up? Um, are we going to discuss that? No, because we just talked about how there was no consensus about what the right mechanism is for for Kent to do this. If that is what, you know, Wendy, if you're open to promoting Yosa's draft ordinance, then I'm happy to discuss that. But I thought that we were going to arrive at what we thought was the right one. I think that- Well, might... this, this incorporates elements from the best ones that I've gone through. Uh, I've, I've picked out things. Um, well, uh, you know, a lot so of the these things thing are, are in all of them. Your proposal but, is fine with me, but I think in order for us to sell it to the selectmen and, and come with a document that says, this has been researched to the fairly well, that would give this a little more weight. So let's do that. Right, but all these things have been in one or another on in many, many uh, uh, lawyer uh, reviewed I ordinances. Know. But each, so each none of them are different. controversial. Each town has each, its own culture. Yeah. You know. But I think none of it by itself is um, is the one to choose in my. Uh, well, I think a good effort was made four years ago, and uh, they no sooner brought it to a town meeting or wherever they brought it, when everybody started running up to Bruce in private, after people had voted 88% in favor of open space, uh, and you no know, sooner, and 77% of them said, yes, and we'd like a fund, but the people who answered the survey don't appear to be the people who talked to Bruce. And yeah, you know, Bruce voted to bring it to the Board of Finance, as did one other selectman. It was a two to one vote. It went to the Board of Finance and that is where it died. Okay. So you got to think about the people who are going to have to vote on it when you shape your argument, like it or not. You know, it's like national politics. I mean, it's, it changes. So we'll see. But I will, I will get in touch with them and see if they have some kind of mechanism for uh, giving us those answers. But I don't know if it even should go to the Board of Finance. Um, if it goes to the Board of Selectmen in a town meeting, why, why do we still need the Board of Finance to approve of it? We didn't bring it to the Board of Finance. That prior Board of Selectmen voted right. to take it to the Board of Finance. I, no, don't know don't how, I don't know what our current select board would decide to do with it. And what we wanted to do is make sure that PNZ was with us on this before it went to the board of selectmen. Yeah. And by, by law, they have to um, study it and give their opinion on it. I think we've said all we can tonight on this. Okay. All right, great. Wendy, thank so what's you. What's the next step going to be? Oh, there are two next steps. So let me rearticulate those. Number one next step is for Wendy to find her contact at TPL, either herself or if you'd like to forward it to me, that's fine too, uh, to reach out to that contact to see if there's somebody at TPL available to help us figure out what the numbers might look like for our town. Number two, to continue to prepare the research so that we can arrive at what we believe is the best mechanism of an ordinance for the town of Kent. I just wanted to thank Wendy for doing all this work and yes, happy Wendy. that we were able to have this discussion about it tonight to go forward. Yay, Carol. Absolutely. <laughs> Lie down again. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. It really is quite a quite a lot of work, and um, and the report uh, reads really well. So I think it's you know we're we're on our way, but it's a lot. Uh, okay, so let's move into five um, B, 
which is the recommendations for the commission homepage. Um, and I think that um, we can talk about the recommendations made as a whole and whether or not we feel comfortable or that it is our role to try and influence how other commissions uh, do their page. But I, I do think that what we definitely are able to do and what's more within our control is our own, our very own homepage for the Kent Conservation Commission. Jean, is there any discussion amongst the selectmen to up, upgrade your uh, the town website. I mean, the the this all came about because some of our commissions haven't changed their their information on their homepage with you for years. I mean, there's there's the, there's the only link is 2010 or something. I mean, it's ridiculous. These things every lots of other towns have a nice picture that goes with each commission. <laughs> Tells, tells what its mission is, tells who's on a commission, how many, when their term ends. Uh, you know, it just gives a lot of information that makes it better understood by the community. And if you, if you suddenly need uh, an, an additional member, at least they know they can go and see what it is this commission really does. Uh, I think... It, it, just go to look at the town of New Milford or, or Washington or anybody and see what a much better right. series of, of uh, home pages they have. And I don't yeah, think we have other commissions change theirs, but we could make ours look better if we had a little more uh, facility with the, the basic format. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have limited resources, unfortunately. There's one person who does the website. Um, is it an in-house thing? Yeah, it's the um, Darlene Brady, the town clerk, does the management and the posting of everything for the website. So um, it is, you know, we're lim She's one person. She has a big job to do. Um, How do you suppose other towns pay for their websites? I think ours is um, a template, though, and, and the capacity of the template is what Wendy would like to be changed, I think. Yeah. It, it's, right. So, right. They're, yeah, they're all templates. That's how, you know, 99.9% .9 of websites are built these days. But, but apparently nobody looks at some of these from one decade to another. If you look at some of these commissions. Right. So, you know, yeah, I would have to, I'd have to talk with Darlene. We'd have to talk with the board. We do need a, you know, in, when you look at other websites, there is some definitely freshening up, um, giving it a you know newer appearance, newer look and feel. I agree. Just from an information standpoint, I don't see why we couldn't just in, make our Kent Conservation Commission portion of the website at least limit uh, list all the stuff, Connie, that you just did for Leanna, that the. Conservation Commission does. Why not just put that up there? That would tell yeah, you. I think up there. I think that what I was I'm trying to do is paraphrase. Um, there was something. Do you remember this when Carol encouraged us to uh, make something that was a little friendlier in terms of explaining what we did? And I think that is up on our yeah, webpage. It is. I put it up there. with Arlene, and and then I added just in the last month the follow the four video. So yeah, we, web. our webpage, I feel like is really great. The only space that we have would be under the board members. We could add like a bullet point list probably of, you know, town cleanup, the, you know, the, the things that Connie just read or, or told about, but our space is pretty much maxed out unless you want to take something off and, and that's well, fine. We, but once you get to it, sometimes there's another, for more, you go to the next page. Are we limited? Well, there, to there we is, have that on the left-hand left. side. There's a whole left nav that has the bylaws, draft, um, oh. conservation development policies, hatch pond report, natural and cultural riches report, temporary we added the bylaws just this week. for loan, trail maps. So there is a bunch of, um, it's like a so, sub- um, menu. Well, the bylaws got added this week. The one thing that I think that 
if you have a strong opinion about, we could probably write for our commission alone is um, written correspondence can be received within and then and our own capacity. I mean, whatever we have the bandwidth for, because I don't think that we can schedule, you know, at public is invited. I think it says that. So I think it does say that. Does it? Yeah. Well, it certainly doesn't say it on all the commissions, and I'm suggesting every one of them. No, and I, yeah, I agree. Oh, I think there's more information that we need to communicate through the website. Right. And sure. that, I mean, that's a nice conversation, but if you remember from the FOIA web, uh, webinar, you know, there is no, there is no thing that compels commissions. And certainly we, as the conservation commission, don't have any authority to compel anybody oh, else's commission, uh, to put up on their website. Any of those the selectmen said, we think you could do a better job. <laughs> no, I don't see any harm in that. There's no compulsion. It's not, I'm not being Putin. If, if, just, if, if the Kent Conservation well, Commission is better, they're part of the website, then maybe. This commission, what would you like to know? That's what? what? Wait, who's talking? Um, <laughs> Liddy, are you saying um, that we could be a model for other commissions? Because I, I think I thought, that's true. And I thought perhaps Jean could talk to the other commissions and point them in that direction. Mm -hmm. so yeah and there so the i think the um we should have a goal that they all and they all do they're all built on a template so they all have basically when there's information for a specific spot on a page it's there like office hours those offices that have office hours have them listed down in the left lower section. Um, like, and I think planning and zoning is similar to the Conservation Commission where they have that subset, you know, the sub menu as well. Um, there are some smaller commissions that aren't as active and don't maybe have as much work product. So they may not have anything in their left nav. Um, so the, there are, you know, there's things that are unique, but there are also things that are the same. And I agree that we, we could definitely be commuting, communicating more information. And just ask them to make their links up to date. Otherwise, we think they're asleep. <laughs> Do we still have an annual report? Because the paragraphs they're in or the chapters they're in every year could be added to each commission, each their own update for the year can be one part of their web page. Right. That, 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 that says what they did in the past year. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. I haven't been asked to do an annual report for more than five years. Mm -hmm. What? Nobody what asked happened? me. Could I um just as a nobody in particular, but maybe the first selectman, I would love to see the Conservation Commission be in the annual report. Um, and so I, I will ask Nancy, um, because it's actually a Board of Finance um, work product. I'm gonna, I wanna ask Nancy, because we really, the Board of Finance really upped their game this year for their report. And there's so many organizations and commissions that aren't on there. And I know that if you guys were asked, you would, of course, be happy to <laughs> provide yeah, I something. I used to get an email about it every year. Yeah, and we used to they always, just yeah. stopped. I don't know why. And, and, and then Bruce so, would always say, he would always commend us in the Board of Selectmen meeting because our chapter was so rich with how active we are. So but it stopped while Bruce was still in office. Yeah. And I'm not really sure what changed, oh. but I stopped getting okay. an email soliciting an annual report from well, that's weird. Commission. So a weird. I'll, yeah, I don't I I think that anyone would would welcome you all to have a report. And I think we can maybe there was just a communication gap and an email fell off a distribution list. I have no idea. Um do you so when I read it last year, timing? I was like, that's weird. Do you have a sense of Sorry. the timing? Yeah, so it usually, 
I think the ask usually goes out in like the October, early November. Is Donna still on the call? Donna, when does when does that ask usually go out? This year, um, this year we had to ask for the ask because it didn't go out. Um, right. we didn't but get that's any... because they had a new clerk and right. well, they I didn't think know. <laughs> typically, um, planning and zoning always does their annual reports when the beginning of the new fiscal year starts because it's, it, the annual report runs on a fiscal year. It's not on a calendar year. So it's always done. And our annual reports are included in the Board of Finance annual report. That's where it goes. Um, so typically, um, I guess October, November, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, yeah, I think it's some in <clears throat> October, early November, and then it's published, I think in January. Time flies so quickly. We can get that information for you, but I can't imagine that any, that the Board of Finance would not love to see you all back on the annual report cycle. Is that ask, asking all of the commissions? Um, like, like I said, I'm gonna just put out a, um, I'm just gonna follow up with Nancy and maybe the Board of Finance wants to relook at it, you know, at the beginning of the fiscal year to say, hey, who who did we, who's not on it? And just to sort of recheck who's on that list. Cause there's a lot, as you can see on the report, there are a lot of entities and organizations that submit, but I can um, at least send an email to Nancy just to say that this discussion was had. Great, thank you. Moving on. Yeah. Do we yeah. need any more on the page, on our homepage? Does everyone want to just take a look at it and see what changes that don't require like a complete redo of the template or a massive expansion of bandwidth or, you know, if you want to just take a look at it, uh, then, you know, we can figure out what we might ask Darlene um, to do when she has the time. That would be great for next meeting. So again, we did add just this last week, the bylaws, and eventually when the pollinator pathway resolution, however it comes together, we'll add that as a PDF. So on the left nav bar. I don't see the um, uh, farm um, ordinance um, or the um, right the ordinances to farm ordinance. are going up as a separate entity and and I did talk to Darlene about it maybe a week or two ago when she was working on getting all the ordinances up as their own entity. Mm -hmm. Just because we brought it to the town meeting, it doesn't necessarily mean that it should live on our page. No, but we can have a link on there, right? So why don't we all take a look as Liddy suggested in between now and our next meeting and come with your suggestions at the next meeting so that we've all looked at it and uh, and can have a good discussion. Um, oh, I don't, can you see this? This is this is on the homepage for the town of Washington for the can you uh, lift conservation it up? commission. Lift it up, please. Like, <laughs> back up a little bit. Oh, back up. All right. That's better. Yeah. But there are many like this, but you see each one has an appropriate picture and and a whole bunch of things here. News, um, meeting calendar, documents of interest, historic New Preston Falls, invasive plants of Washington, natural resource inventory, New Preston open space, all yeah. subcategories. I think we need to be conscious of, as we was saying, you know, resource limitations. Um, you know, we need to remember that this is a very small part of what Darlene does as our town clerk, uh, but we can certainly make a wish list for, you know, the things that we hope that people who go looking for us on the town's website would see. Well, I think for sure we should have everybody's term of office. Okay, so we're going to discuss this though next time. Okay.
Okay. Good. Because we, we've already spent a lot of time on this. And so I, I really, you know, list of recommendations next time it'll be on the agenda. Um, let's move into our updates. Uh, 5D, um, I'm assuming there probably are updates to our April events as we get closer and closer to April. Uh, Liddy, do you want to um, report on the cleanup and, uh, you know, some of the dates and decisions and what, what we can do to help you? Well, the only decision that I know of is that uh, Melissa has decided when the town cleanup will happen. So that's going to happen right on the 15th, right, Melissa? I have decided when the Ken town, town. center, the yes. town center has happened. I haven't decided about the whole town. Don't, don't. No, the village. The village. The village. I'm okay, sorry. sure. No, the village. You've decided that that will be on the 15th. We are going to do that on the 15th for the, the scouts, correct? Okay. And when I was not here last month, I gather that the all of the commissioners prefer to do a clean up for the entire month of April. Is I think true? we didn't care. We wanted you to decide. Doesn't matter to me. I'll organize it any way you guys want it organized. In the past, it's been a, out over the whole month, you're going to lose people. They're just kind that's of. That's right. Calm that's it. right. But if that's what you want, that's what no, we can do. I don't want. We don't. We had no preference. We taught. We well, talked about times. a bunch of options it's in the minutes i think um there were Not a bunch really. of options you know that that people just tossed out but we really wanted to hear from you what we what you thought was the best timing for it i i could care less it's just that i think if it's concentrated in one week you get people a little more excited we can try it every year i try to get dot to do route seven north and south and 341 East and West at the same time so that maybe townspeople will see that happening. But if it happens any time in the month of April, I don't think that that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't do it. I think that it ought to be one week. Perfect. If Melissa has settled on the 15th, then probably it ought to be the week that ends on the 15th. On the other hand, I gather that Lynn wants South Kent School to do it early in the month. So I've got to find, uh, find out what her preferences are because I think they do so much of the town that that might solidify which week it has to be. I do think it should be a week though. Okay. And I don't know whether you feel- Watch out for Easter and all that. Yeah, Easter is well- We're Easter, on Good Friday, yeah. Yeah, the, the village cleanup will be on Good Friday. So Easter is, that, is two days later. Um, I don't know. I, Ours I is more thing. in conjunction with the school break, the public school break. So, um, and, and getting the this, kids. When is that break, Melissa? I have to look it up again. Sorry, Liddy. I'll I'll get back. To, I'll send it to you in an email, just because but, I, no, I, I, I I I want to decide it tonight, though, Melissa. Unfortunately, okay. And and we then, can't do this except at a meeting. So, okay. Tell me, doesn't anybody know when? I'm that? looking it up. Okay. I, I, never know I, I, I keep pulling it and then I keep losing it because I know we're doing something on the 20th, right, Connie? We are. Actually, I thought Melissa, we don't worry about it. I have <laughs> written it down. It's the, um, the 18th to the 22nd. So it's the following week. Oh. So that's that doesn't conflict with anything. So let me... If Wait, you that all doesn't... Don't... Do, oh, sorry. I'm in March. Yeah, it's April 15th to the 22nd. And I can't, I think we actually said we're doing our town cleanup on the 14th, Thursday. Oh, not, not Passover, not the 15th? Not Good Friday, the 15th. Oh. No, we're doing it on the 14th. Oh, it's I have half, an email. It, you, it's a full day of school. And I think it's, um, I think we decided that we were doing it then. I'll check again. Oh, I have an email from you saying the 15th, but that's okay. Do you want to change it to the 14th? That's good. I think we changed it after we heard back from families. Okay. Um, well, then <clears throat> let me, if you all will leave it in my hands, let me see when Lynn wants the South Kent school to do it. I suspect it may be the week of the fourth, in which case I would, sus I would suggest that that be our cleanup week uh, and then have the village happen as a separate event. Yeah, I think that's fine. That's fine. We should uh, make sure we know where the signs are. The sandwich yeah. board signs. I think, Carol, do you have them or do you know where they are? No, I think they're in the basement of Town Hall. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. 
Oh, yeah. incidentally, speaking of town hall, separate thing, I do have a box of bags for the uh, recycling holders, bag holders. The, I, the temporary recycle. Bag. Yeah. So where do I put that? that? So you go down into you go in town hall and you go downstairs into the basement and it's just through a door. The light switch is on your right hand side and they are towards well, they were sometimes things get moved, but you'll see they'll they'll be wherever our recycle our temporary. Recycle okay. so, are. so I'll just leave the box of bags there and somebody yeah, will leave them with the of, actual yeah. equipment and that way they're easy to find when we need them. OK, OK. Sounds and good. if the signs haven't been moved, you should be able to see the signs, you know, those plastic signs that we bought. Right. That have the things. They should be right there. The last I saw them, I haven't been in a while. But okay. that's where I saw them last. I'll check it out. All right. So so the, the timing will be determined by South Kent School. Great. Uh, and then do you want to have anything at the transfer station on that Saturday? Either the 9th or the 16th? I'm willing. Anyone else? I kind of like it. I don't know. It's silly, but I've yeah. always liked it. <laughs> the 16th, though, I think, is that, Carol, remind me, is that Passover? I was, I'm just going to, I was just looking at the calendar. Um, the Sunday I is Easter, <laughs> for sure. Because uh, the first, the first Seder is Friday night, right? Yeah. Okay. The fifteenth. The fifteenth. Yeah. And then what and happens? The second Seder is the sixteenth. So, is that a bad thing? Well, um, thing. so when are you thinking of doing it, Carol? I was, I was going to let the South Kent School determine which week we do. No, but, I know, but are you saying the thing at the transfer station? That's what you're asking. Well, should it be the ninth of the sixteenth? It probably should be the sixteenth because by then we'll have the village kids stuff and they're the ones who might like the donuts and cider better than <laughs> the rest of us oh i thought they were for me <laughs> for your freezer yes yes wendy so we have yeah. lots of donuts <laughs> lots of donuts oh yum <laughs> i would say the 16th works better in my calendar just quickly looking but is it okay to do it on the 16th um, you guys got to tell me i don't know it's, I won't, I can't, I don't know if I can be there. I just don't know if people, I mean, I, uh, being that that's the Seder, I mean, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be available. So I don't know about other people. And we can't do it. No, I mean, if two people can't do it. Well, some people so we're doing it the ninth. But yeah. I think Liddy's point about that we don't have, oh, we wouldn't have the bags to show off what we've collected. But well, that's we, not necessarily no. the purpose then. Carol, that's not strictly true. We'd have South Kent schools bags and any of our worker bees around town could bring their bags in. What we wouldn't have was what the kids pick up in the village cleanup. But I think the main purpose of terms of educating the people who are coming through the transfer station that this is going on would be accomplished on either day. So whatever logistically works out best. Okay. Then let's can can we just leave it and and let me let South Kent School determine what it is. Sure. Yep. Okay. So it'll either be the ninth of the sixteenth, depending on South Kent School. Right. Okay. Okay. End of Lady, discussion. The communication yep. from Lynn was that they were leaving. South Kent School was graduating early, earlier than normal, and so they they were consolidating and exam prep and all that was going to happen. So right. No. Let let me just check with her. Is there anything that we can do like now to anything, any, you know, coordination part that we can do to help you? I don't think so. Just got to go buy. We will not buy any of the recycle bags. I will just forget that whole thing. It never really worked anyway. It was a great concept, but it didn't work. So I think we'll just have black bags for picking up trash and, and uh, latex free gloves. Uh, not the ones donated last year that were entirely too small. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I'll just, I'll, I'll go buy those. And then uh, the chamber in the past has uh, helped us pay for that kind of stuff. And then we buy uh, cakes to bribe the South Kent schools kids to work. 
and and the uh, Boy Marvelwood Scouts, and the Boy Scouts and Marvelwood Community Service is Joanna Tucker now. So if you need her contact info, you should maybe just Would send you me. Would you please send me that, Melissa? That'd be great. Yep. And is there? Do you or any of you know who the contact person is at Kent School? We keep trying to reach out to them, but it would be nice if you had a, if I had a person. Ask Mike Benjamin. Yeah, I would say ask oh, Mike. To ask him with that. Terrific. Great. Okay, that's okay. it for that topic. Thank you. Uh, update on KCS Arbor Day. Any? Yeah, I spoke with N Star. Um, and we're going to meet on Friday after school. Um, she will also bring Chris Rose, who is on the committee, and Bruce Bennett. Um, now, Bruce apparently had proposed to and that we would do a tree planting on Elizabeth Street instead of at the school uh, mm. because a couple of trees died and he'd like to replace those. So, um, I, I didn't hear more about it, the, the reason to do it there, but we're going to take a look at it. Um, but what, what do you think? Uh, does it matter to, to the commission if we... No, I think that's great. The school, the school is too full of trees now. <clears throat> yeah. Same. So I don't know if students are going to be involved as in the past. In the past, we always had... Um, some students helping with digging the hole and then the students on Arbor Day itself would um, throw a shot or winners of the uh, poster contest would throw in a or of some other contest would throw in a shovel full of soil uh, when it got planted. Um, so I have to see how that's going to work if they may not be involved if we do it on Elizabeth Street. So. My, my personal preference, Yos, and I hope Ann Starr would feel the same way, would be that if this is for KCS's Arbor Day, that students would be involved in it. I don't. I think the Conservation Commission would support tree planting along any of our village streets, uh, as we've done in the past. So I'm not against Ruth Bennett's idea by any means, but I... I would love it if we could continue to participate in some meaningful way in the education and the uh, children's engagement, uh, you know, portions of what KCS's Arbor Day is all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I would prefer it too. So, but is yeah, the garden uh, club uh, willing to pay their share for the? These are going to be more expensive if there are multiple trees. Well, it would be just one tree. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. and, but, and then I would have to talk with Ken Greenhouse, uh, get tree at a wholesale price. Um, I mean, now there's new owners, uh, but uh, Daryl is still working there. I usually deal with Daryl, so he can probably get them to agree to a wholesale price. Um, and so if it would go on Elizabeth Street, I also don't know if it would be an oak tree then. That depends on the location and on what what was planted there before. Yes, I think that um, that Doug Talame had some suggestions for trees that were good for pollinators. And right. maybe, maybe well, I mean the oak tree was the favorite one and their cherry okay. trees. And but just select others. a tree that, that fits that right. bill. But but not every tree like that is suitable for a uh, Village Street um, depends on the spot and so. You know, I, and I, I, I agree with Connie that, I mean, uh, yes, that all sounds very good. And a white oak, if it could be chosen, would be great. And I respect, uh, you know, Bennett's uh, opinions and being involved. But the could we still figure out some way that we could be connected educationally to the Arbor Day awareness at the school? Maybe mm -hmm. through the poster, maybe through a prize, maybe through something. We would all miss a song. So, um, you know, it's like I'd hate to see the tradition completely disappear. Although I do agree with Wendy that just putting in a tree for the sake of putting in a tree, you know, if it's not needed, that's not where we should go. But let's not drop it completely. There, right. there maybe. But that, there's also the handout of the little uh, saplings 
right, Melissa? That, um, I haven't yeah, heard back from him, but I, I assume that he will still be interested in participating. Oh, well, then, That's Melissa, true. that would be the, the connection that we're looking for. The right. educational component, yeah. I just haven't heard back that he will be willing to do that again this year. So I'm not going to commit him to that. You yet. know, as, as we discuss Arbor Day, you might remember that we do have the Cougar Fund, which is growing. Right. And we, you know, we should look around and figure out where we could plant more trees in town. Um, it always worries me that we planted those ones by town hall and they died. So I think we need to know nor, more about the soil that we're putting in, them in to be sure it's successful. But, you know, we should we should be planting some trees. Just but to, in a way, Melissa, if you can't get the kind of, um, you know, the way it was provided in previous years from them for the trees, if we really feel that kids going home with seedlings for trees is important in the way we want to go, couldn't we then not rely on them and go to our Cougar Fund and put that whole program in this year? I mean, I think we have to just, every year is different, going to be different now. We have to look at new models of how we're going to do things. So um, I think once I think the sidewalks are in, we might think yep. about more trees on Main Street, get yep. the sidewalk settled. Yep. And good we could make Very a major point. purchase there. Mm -hmm. I think we should go in both directions. I think we're talking about two different things. I think we're talking about our concern for Main Street. And at the same time, we're also talking about an educational component of Arbor Day with the school. I think make the only sure thing that I Alec, would... Let me make sure that Alec has a chance to get back to me and Good. before we decide that we're going to spend Kuga money for that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But it is a possibility. Mm -hmm. I always wonder if there's some way to encourage the families that get those little seedlings to actually plant them and take care of them and be sure we did. That something we happens. We did, Liddy. In fact, we asked them to send us pictures to our social media and many did. So we got pictures on our social media of kids planting them or their tree or whatever. Well, how about and remember, year? Melissa Great. did a terrific job of what she provided with the seedlings for the families to that. know how to do it and what to do. So that, that was, was good, but but maybe some pictures now of trees that are a year or two old. Ooh. Well, and in fact, some people did provide the tree pictures of their trees from way back when the garden club and we would give like trees and bushes and stuff for the poster contest or at the writing things. They provided pictures of their you know, college age kids with their trees. So you really, that did happen. Uh, wish yeah, it, people, people like it. I, I, I always wonder, and, and Connie and I have had a conversation about this in relation to seeds and things like that. I do wonder what the percentage don't get planted, right? But they are seedlings and, and the majority probably do get a chance at survival. But I think one of the other questions that's up in the air uh, Yost, and I don't know if you can answer this, is that is is the school planning on having an Arbor Day celebration? Is there a poster contest this year? There is. There yeah. is. I don't know what's happening. The, the poster contest has been announced and I posted it. So Melissa, do we, can, you've done this in the past. Um, can you take care of making a poster, making a blow up size poster of the winner? Anne has not decided if they want that yet. Okay. So yes, I plan to take care of it if they decide it. In the past, in recent years, they've brought in their smart board and showed it there, which is great for the presentation, but it doesn't bring that next component of it gets put, brought to the town hall, it gets brought to the transfer station, it gets some real airtime in our community. We have to respect this, what the educators at the school want to do, and our job is to support them in that. Agreed. You're talking about the recycling poster contest, Correct. right? So yeah, we usually pay to have that. It usually coincides day. with the Arbor Day, Jean. So we, um, yeah, we did the judging a week or two ago, um, and there is, I I can't remember, is it the thirty first the of March that the regional um, so judging what we is, do I normally forget. is keep it quiet until Arbor Day because that's when the school always announces the grade by grade and who got 
sent over and then who the grand prize for the school. And so right. not super technical. It's not embargoed information or anything, but it is, you know, kind of kept on the down low um, until Arbor Day, at least in the last. Would you like to know that the national tree of Ukraine is the viburnum? That's cool. Maybe that's the tree this year. That's deer that food. Has what? to be a native viburnum. Well, they call it uh, viburnum or willow. It's a symbol of the hunt. There are a lot of viburnums, but if we plant it, we could do a native one. Uh, and and yes, they are deer food, but that's how we know they're native, right? If nothing <laughs> eats it, <laughs> there's a reason. <laughs> anyway, it just seemed like uh, so oh, is that how I that's around. how I tell that? <laughs> that makes all yeah. the sense in the world so, now. <laughs> so in addition to changing the concept of what a beautiful yard looks like, you know, another mnemonic that we've been encouraged to adopt is that we are not gardening for plants that don't get eaten by mis by insects anymore. We're gardening to and we're, our, our garden is a an insect feeder. Our garden is a bird feeder. We're gardening to give to give living things something to eat. Does that mean there are problems? Feeder is that good too? <laughs> right, and that includes the deer. Yeah, if okay. you if you plant for deer, you're not going to have anything left. Right. <laughs> deer. The deer I don't do think... a lot of harm in the woods against. Uh, to yeah. uh, young saplings. It's a and real big problem. So it's not something yeah. to take lightly, but I, but Doug Tallamy was not encouraging us to plant plants for deer, uh, but he was suggesting plants that were both the host plant, uh, the, you know, that, that hosted the, the, you know, the larval stages of insects and plants that were providing food for pollinators. So that is, you know, his concept of you know what your garden and what your landscape is good for. It's good for food. Well, I have the perfect garden and everything gets eaten <laughs> by something. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so, so the native tree of Ukraine, lots of considerations here. Yos, I hope that meeting goes well on Friday. Look forward to your update on that. And uh, Melissa, as well, um, when you hear uh, you know, about the possibility of, of seedlings. Uh, and maybe you and I could uh, look back on that one tree planted thing to see if, I mean, I don't know that we need 2000 trees, <laughs> but uh, you know, we did identify. I would think if we needed 2000 trees, maybe we would consider being partnering with our regional conservation commissions in the region one community and I know Cornwall does a great Arbor Day. Sharon does Arbor Day. So there is some possibilities, but let's see what we get from Alec first. Sounds good. Uh, okay. Sorry. Um, can I just make a comment here um, that it's not an April event because our library program is not going to be April this year, but I just wanted to do a quick update to you about our program with the library. We are definitely going to do a program with the library this year. It is definitely going to be about the importance of native plants. It will probably be in May and June. It may be a two-part um, activity rather than just a one-day thing. And it may uh, very likely involve some planting in their garden. And um, I'm working with uh, the children's librarians and they are very excited about the topic. and. To um, get them more on board, I wanted them to look at the books. Both of the books that uh, Doug, Doug Talamay's books are at the library now, both the one that the library purchased for adults and the one that we purchased for the adults. And they are both continually out, <laughs> so they're in circulation. So instead, um, I advised uh, Debbie to look at the Zoom, Doug Talamay's Zoom, so that they can really you know, get the basic concepts of what we were going. Uh, just keeping in mind that the importance of native plants is really, it's a very complex topic for early childhood, but we're moving ahead with lots of different ideas and um, so more to be continued. Great, thank you. Very good.
Can I just tell you all that 103 people have watched our videos so far? That's great. That's, that's cool. Cool. Okay. So let's talk about E, the solar educational program. Is there an update, Wendy? Thanks for talking about it earlier in the. Uh, yes. Um, I sent out letters to four different. Well, the Green Bank is no longer involved. They they used up all the money they had, and now they've turned it over to uh, Pura and to and Eversource. So I called up a fellow at Eversource, and he was couldn't have been more uh, positive about the idea. But he said he was the wrong person, but he was going to find me the right person in the community, uh, whatever they call it. They're at Eversource, and I should hear back from them in a day or so. I said I want. I said, even if you if you have a ready to go program, that's great. But if you don't, you should. So I said, why don't we become your test case? And he said, good idea. So one way or another, I'm thinking about September, October. And um, I have uh, the library on board. Uh, I forget the name of the person who's the new uh, programs director. Is it Brittany something or something with a B? I don't know, uh, but she's all in favor. And, and Dana Slaughter is going to work with us too. So, Perfect. and we'll find out what, you know, at that point, we'll find out whether we want to do a, a house tour as well. Um, I think that would make it more interesting for people, but there's so much going on with solar. And I think it's a responsible thing to do. Great. Wendy, I went to a solar um, webinar this week and I got the link to it and I sent it to you and Dana just this evening. Oh, good. Okay. So you can watch that one. Oh. Uh, one of the things Eversource has done, I, you can't see it, I expect, but it shows they have all of the ways in which various things that you have use up uh, electricity, like uh, in the office bedroom, uh, 12 hours a one window air conditioner, $1.99. But of course, this is going to have to be brought up to date because <laughs> prices are rising. But this really um, explains to you what, what all the electricity is that you're using. You know, one hour of an oven is uh, 21 cents. But of course, that's very general. You don't know how hot the oven is. But uh, Anyway, I think these are ways in which Eversource can provide us with visuals, and um, but we need a talker. And uh, Dana suggested, or no, I guess the person at the library suggested a an installer, but I said, no, we can't go with a single installer. That would be uh, unbalanced. I said, what we need is either to get multiple installers who could have tables at this show, or we would have somebody who is just a more, you know, from DEEP or someplace as our talker. So we're working on it. Very early you know, stage. Ray, Ray First from Litchfield. Ray First was the first person that came to my mind, and he's a great guy, but I just don't think it would be appropriate to have a fellow who makes his living off this, too. I mean, I think Ray is, is quite independent, and I, I heard him speak at a program at the uh, ag at the agricultural extension place up in uh, Torrington. Uh, and when they had a bunch of farmers there who were turning their barns and their cow manure into solar, I don't know what. And that was, it, Ray did a good job, but I, I still think we need somebody who's independent to do that. I have no problem having people leave their cards, you know, at the show. I think if you look at the one I sent you, and hopefully it came through because I do have a problem sometimes emailing you, but there uh, were I three, by the way, I found oh, out good. What the was. The, there were three people that spoke on this topic and any one of them probably could do the same. And so Are it might, the Connecticut area. one was not uh, two were, but okay. they were, they were speaking on all on Connecticut. So it, it was very interesting. It was way. I think after the the um, webinar, I even said to Connie, like, this is, it just illustrated to me how much I actually don't understand about it. Mm. I mean, you know, right. 
it wasn't speaking above me. I would just, I learned a lot. No, it's essential that we get somebody who can talk, uh, talk the talk for us because yeah, it is very complicated and it scares people away. So, yeah. Um, as you, uh, you know, as you continue to progress through this, Wendy, if you're finding like graphics um, that you think are really persuasive and helpful, like the one that you held up, um, you know, Melissa can always post, I mean, I could too, but Melissa is <laughs> terrific at it, uh, at putting things like that up on our Facebook. And so, you know, those would be good for promoting the event, but also anytime too, just to, you know, get the information out there and encourage people. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, thankfully, we, we have six months to get this put together. So we'll see. But yeah, the prices have to be appropriate for September or October. And who knows what anything will cost by then. But, uh, you know, by the way, uh, uh, Jean, have we gotten any closer to getting a, a replacement for the uh, charging station at Town Hall? Um, it's back on... Joyce's list to contact the vendor and see if um, there is to have them come out. Or state or federal money for this, I believe. It's coming. Okay. I don't know of any funding right now, but with the IIJA, there's um, federal funding that's passing through this to the okay. states a lot of EV charging. They've identified actually Route 7 as one of the um, designated corridors for EV charging from New Milford to the mass border. So we're gonna, we are likely going to see a lot of funding that is going to be targeted at that. You might even think about the, the visit miles. as a place. Oh, yep. There's there's a number of places and there's like bu these buffer zones. I believe it's, um, there's a certain amount of um, feet that it can be off of the state highway. So it doesn't have to be right exactly on route seven. There's it's, it's very good news if this funding it's going to come through it just is going to take time but um yeah I, they've been talking about it at ccm and costs it's pretty exciting about the whole package that's coming through for transportation for there's a ton of um ev fleet improvements to get fleets more um replace uh vehicles with ev with electric vehicles um, school buses, there's going to be yeah. a huge initiative to replace school buses with electric electric school buses. That whole it actually um, is an opportunity to um, for us to submit testimony for the hearing potentially. Yep. Yeah. So it's um, very exciting. An enormous amount of money is coming through that um, that IIJA um, bill that just re that recently passed. And it is uh, the priority for. Um, for the fast uh, EV chargers, as opposed to the slow chargers? Yeah, I, I read some stuff about that. I'm sure by the time the funding comes down, that will be the focus. Because slow chargers in public spaces don't make it doesn't any work. sense. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Right. right. OK, let's move on to, um, to F, Sustainable Materials Management in Kent. Uh, and I guess, um, Jean, with you here tonight, it would be an opportunity for us to hear if there's been any results for your survey for organics and if there's anything that we can do to help with that effort or anything else at the transfer station. We do. I completely forgot that was on the agenda, but I just... If it's not ready, it's okay. No. It... For two hours, so we would be perfectly happy to discuss this next time but if there's an update that's quick we'll take it now um so we had a, a super super quick update so so far we have 188 respondents i will send you connie the link to the dashboard that i built for the survey results on survey monkey so anybody can look at it um and jen is working on the grant end of things um, she's also extremely busy working um, on the short session bills. There are a number of short session bills that I saw on your list. Um, so you guys know what all those are, but that's the short. So I'll send you the link. Survey still open? <laughs> yes. Why don't you send it to us when it's closed? Okay. And let us know if there's something that we can do. And then okay. we'll, 
you to put it on as an update. Um, okay. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> All right. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's go to H, which is um, Kent Trails, a hiker's guide, and that is Liddy. Well, I just picked up today 50 more copies of the old book. Um, Connie, you said the Kent Land Trust wanted 25. Yeah, <laughs> we'll buy 25. Do you want them now? You know what? If we could have, I mean, at least one, because <laughs> we, have, we actually have zero in our office right now. <laughs> And so, you know, even, so, but we're, when we're really going to need them, Liddy, is when we start to table at the farmer's market again and at public events. So if you could spare like one now, that would be great. But uh, it, it, if you're committed to give them away to other people, we can wait until it happens again or until you have a chance to order more. No, that's okay. You they come in packets of 10. So I would like to give you or sell you 10. Okay. And I will, I will bring them with an invoice to you at the Kent Land Trust um, the next couple of days. Um, and then uh, the Sportsman Connection, he said that they could use a hundred of them. I gave him oh. the last 10 that I had, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but he would, he would certainly like a whole lot more. Uh, he's just gearing up for the summer or for the spring, I guess. Okay, great. Welcome, Maria. We have a special guest, you guys. Thank oh you. I, I'm, I'm parachuting in uh, cold here, just getting off another <laughs> long call. So, thank you. But we're we're, uh, we're we've been on a long call, so <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to actually, you know, two we'll hours that you're here. Uh, but we're also tired too. Um, Liddy, anything more on the trails book? Or are we moving? On, are we moving on from that? Well, I think Wendy and I will try to work to uh, put in the, the updates and corrections and get a, a more current book. The, book. the book that we're selling is, we did it, what, two years ago? Yeah, it's still great. And, and the changes are just additions. They are, but it is, Weantanag is not Weantanag anymore. Correct. There, there, there's some fairly major things. Um, Connie, I think that I have all of your changes i i hope i don't know you do but you don't have all the shape files for john so that is something for clark to you know to walk and lay down a breadcrumb trail and then that way john will have a shape to transpose onto his um okay map. is he working on that it, yeah i mean he we discussed it in our staff meeting earlier this week and really what he has to do is just get out there and walk the trail with uh you know with his phone um tracking we Will we it, connect this the, to the, uh, the the Bible the Bible school trail? Well, yeah, I mean that is that's the question, Wendy. About you know, it, as soon as you do this, it'll be out of date again because the Bible camp, uh, the Warren Land Trust should take ownership of that at some point this year. After which time, they've already got money in place uh, to connect the trails to East Ken Hamlet Nature Preserve, and so that will look a little different. Uh, when the Kent Land Trust took the uh, 70 acre parcel that adjoins to Skiff Mountain South Preserve, it did so with the intention of building a trail that connects down to Skiff Mountain Road so that property can be connected to, uh, you know, to um, Pond Mountain and the Appalachian Trail and so there'll be another trail there. Uh, you know, well, that's going to be worth two pages right there because there's also a tombstone down there, as you probably know. <laughs> Wendy, you're wonderful. No, uh, <laughs> no, uh, Jim Norton sent me a photograph of it. The the uh, one of the uh, founders of uh, uh, well, he was well, part of the abolitionist movement among other things. But his tombstone is there, and that's really quite interesting. In the Bible camp, yeah, it's the founder of Oberlin College. No, well, he's the second. He's not the founder. That was uh, yeah, anyway. But you know, yeah, I know. A, I know. know. I looked him up. Yeah, but anyway, it's a nice little story. Now that won't be in Kent, no, so I, I, you but it's a connection. how you want to describe that. Um, I, I think it's going to be valuable because people go into our part and just want to continue on. Seems to me that's not a problem, really. That, that's certainly the intention of the grant that pays to connect those trails is that there will be more people. That that's will a year away. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe Lydia and John and I can figure out a way that we can make an insert that goes in later. 
Well, then there's also the trail work we're doing at the KLT farm this year because we'll be making that Claire Murphy trail into an accessible trail. So the footprint might be a little bit different. Plus it will be a boardwalk with an accessible viewing platform. Uh, in that case, we might just put that one in as something to look forward to <coughs> and not have to redo it again. But for how, how long, how, when will that happen, Connie? So Hopefully this summer. <laughs> Right. Well, we need to pull a wetlands permit for it. So, uh, so I've been talking with Donna about that. Um, I don't think it's likely to go in during the summer because my sense is it probably would be disruptive to Megan's operations if we did it during the summer. Uh, but then it would be something that would happen during the fall. Um, but if we know what it's going to be, when Wendy, do you feel okay about publishing sure. it? Sure. We'll, yeah. we'll put it. We'll write it that way. Yeah, that's okay, Connie. Yeah, the most we can get, let's get as much corrected now as we can. Right. right. And then maybe do an insert on the Bible camp later. Lady, can you make a, a stamp that says that its name has changed in the Northwest uh, Land Conservancy and stamp that on the preface uh, page of every book? I think John's going to figure that out, how he's going to do that. I'm not sure what Will said, but we'll, just, we'll figure it out. Uh, it's, um, <laughs> that, okay. just, that one change that um, um, Ryan Tanok is now called NCLC. And you step that in one of the front pages in every um, of the old uh, reports, the old guides. Then you said we should put that in, in the introduction or something? Well, you just stamp it on, on the page. So changing their logo. Least that changes in there. Well, right? that obviously we have to do that. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah. Are you asking for more than that? No, just oh, uh, just okay. you, you can have a stamp made that says that one sentence and you just stamp it on every preface um, page. So it's not right. just changing the logo, but there's some sort of a sentence that goes with it that says this used to be we and not. Well, just at the beginning of the book, not on every map. Uh, oh. You just say, we Antinoc is now NCLC. Okay, okay. Can do, will do. Okay, so can we move on to legislative session so that we can- sure. so, we, so that I can have dinner? <laughs> Me too. Yep. Eat before are, the meeting. We are very fortunate tonight to have Maria with us. I, I put a lot of information at the bottom of this agenda, but not with the intention of discussing all of these bills, really more so that you all have an idea of what types of bills are before the Environment Committee uh, in this short session. There are others. Uh, this list I gleaned from the two or three prior Environment Committee hearings that have been held. So really the best place to go for information is to go to the state's website and go to the Environment Committee's website and see what the hearings are. Uh, and you can read all of the materials. Um, but I think maybe the best use of our time tonight, uh, since Maria is here, is Maria, you could give us a synopsis of how it is this year. And maybe if there are any of these, uh, you know, raised bills that, um, that you think have a chance of making it, you know, making it out, uh, or could use our help making it out, or just that we should be aware of. Just let us know what we should know. Sure. So uh, my apologies for not. Um, I, I would have given this a little bit more thought had it been on my radar screen. But um, and I don't have your agenda in front of me, so I don't know which bills you're looking at. I pulled out my environment file, um, and I can sort of. So I can share my screen. Coming. I would make you, it would make your face small though. What would you rather, what would you guys rather do? <laughs> Go ahead, share the screen. Share your so screen. You guys know what I look like. <laughs> okay. All right. Give me a second. I'm sorry. I guess I'm most, con I'm most interested in hearing what, um, which hearings you're listening to that are most compelling to you and, and you know, what, what does your day look like? So, I mean, environment, we've had some long environment hearings uh, into the night. I think, you know, we're starting to, we're all getting up just procedurally. I don't know what the, we're all pushing up against what are, what are what's known as the JF deadline, which is the deadline by which um, 
uh, we have every committee. Thank you, Jean. I think just sent me the agenda. So I can look at that. Um, you know, you have to get you, bills have to be voted out of committee by a certain date if they're going to be considered in in the you know by the full legislature. And so, for example, in public safety, my deadline is March twenty second. So I, I imagine the environment committee's deadline is very similar. So we're all like packing in last of the public hearings. Um, and so, I mean, one big topic that um, is you know our solid waste stream, which is a problem, and uh, and. And so that's definitely, you know, in, including the death of Mira, which many other towns use. Well, thank, thankfully, Kent is part of a, uh, a better consortium. Uh, <laughs> this tonic, uh, I always get the acronym wrong, but the, the fabulous Jennifer Heaton Jones. Um, so you're in a better position, but it is a looming crisis. And so sort of behind that, there are a bunch of bills with dealing with that having to do with extended producer responsibility, both holistically and also sp with specificity for things like tires and gas canisters. Um, some, you know, uh, agricultural, climate smart agricultural um, uh, initiatives, a lot of conversation between the Environment Committee and the Energy and Technology Committee that I also sit on about, you know, sustainable energy and, um, you know, the resilience of the grid and making sure that we actually keep the lights on while moving away from carbon and actually meeting the targets that we have set. Um, we had some uh, testimony about the other, a lot of testimony about the use of rodenticides uh, and how the latest gen gen generation of them is really doing a lot of damage to birds. And so there's a bill to ban that in state um, properties uh, the, the, the pest control groups are trying to get stop us from doing that, but it was pretty compelling. We had a lot of great testimony from the Audubon and, and others who do re bird rehabilitation. Um, and, you know, people who are protect pollinators in general. Um, it's a, it's a, you know, real threat. Um, what else is on here that you were looking at? Tree planting funds. Yeah, I think that's, uh, it, it has been a topic. Uh, in the Environment Committee, trees in general, uh, particularly because DEEP did a really bad thing by uh, cutting an entire stand of mature oaks on the Houstonic River um, recently, and they're um, embarrassed by that, and they're, they're pretty, you know, kind of back on their heels a little bit, you know, they, they do a lot of double speak and don't want to commit to things, and in the last, the hearing that we had, we do have a bill that would basically require an arborist be involved in any decision like that by deep to remove anything, be anything that wasn't, I mean, with exceptions for if you have a storm and there's a tree that really is about to fall down and it's really dangerous, of course you can act with urgency, but that's not what this was. Um, and so the, a lot of conversations about, about how deep needs a more transparent and, and better informed process. Of course, an open question there is whether the, the appropriate expertise exists in deep uh, there's sort of an old fashioned forestry ethos there uh, that's not quite in line with the way most of us think uh, forest management should be conducted now. Um, so that's a change that's coming slowly. We're sort of hoping that some people will retire soon. And so when we replace them, we'll replace them with a little different set of expertise that can, can manage these things. But, but so tr tree replanting has been a big um, topic of conversation. So that bill, I think that bill actually, that, that does have legs. Um, there was some question about, I think in that one about limitations on where you're allowed to plant the trees and there shouldn't be, you know, there's a, there, we learned a lot about a plan called right tree, right place. I might be wrong about that, but if you heard about that, mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot, I had never heard of it, nor had a lot of legislators on the committee. Uh, it was pointed out that that actually does a good job it doesn't have to be no tree in the utility right away. It can be the right kind of tree. Um, uh, I think so um, if you're ever looking for more information about that, um, the Avalonia Land Conservancy, which uh, practices more in the eastern, maybe northeastern part of the state, uh, did a whole program on it. So they probably have information on their website about that. Yeah. Avalonia. Um, those are the two extended producer responsibility bills. And I think those two, so there are, there are, there are three, yeah, there's the other one. 
So the first two, the, um, the gas cylinder one and the tire one, I think those have strong possibility of, of passing. They were up, they were considered and debated and actively, you know, there's still opposition as you can imagine, uh, but they've been thoroughly vetted and I think they have bipartisan support. So um, those I think have good prognosis. The, the big picture one, SB 115, which is, you know, more broadly for consumer packaging, which is based on a British Columbia model. Um, uh, and that's a, that, that is a, I'm, I'm certainly support that bill, but it is a wholesale change in the way we handle recycling and it, and there are a lot of vested interests like the haulers, for example, who are, you know, they're not, they're not bad people. They just, that's how they make their a big chunk of their business is hauling that, that recycling. And so we need to make sure that, you know, as we shift from the response, having municipalities be responsible for this stuff to the producers being responsible for this stuff, which is definitely the right way to go. Um, there are a lot of uh, invested parties that need to be addressed. And so that one, that's a big lift. I would, I would suggest that's probably not a short session this year kind of bill. Um, polystyrene, I think that, uh, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm talking a little bit off the cuff here, <laughs> but, um, I think that one has a good shot. Um, we, uh, you know, it's, it helps that we have as the Senate co-chair of the environment committee runs a restaurant. And, um, so when people push back and say, oh, it's impossible, you know, restaurants had to, had to use this stuff during the pandemic and it was takeout that really, you know, got them through it. Um, she's able to quite cogently argue, actually, we've made the choice not to do that. And there are other ways to go here. And, and, and just culturally, I myself find myself having a visceral reaction when I see that stuff now. And, and because there are a lot of businesses choosing not to do it, um, it's becoming more, I think, you know, consumers are starting to demand it or, or be turned off by a business that's using that. So I think that helps. Um, and I think chlorophyll pyrophos, uh, neonicotinoids, I think actually that has a good shot. So the, the biggest pushback on 120 uh, were in the past has been from the people who uh, run and maintain golf courses. Um, and, but this year we got some testimony from them. Some of them saying, actually, we don't use it that much and we like to have options. And so we don't like the bill, but it's not really a deal killer. And so uh, in particular, like one of the, some, golf course manager in Stanford, which has a lot of golf courses said, oh, fine. So I think that has a better shot this year. I mean, I was in the midst of the hearing, I think I texted Melissa because um, somebody claimed, I think it was Senator Minor claimed during the hearing that Kent had used um, neonicotin, neo, I always pronounce this wrong, neonicotinoids, right? Yes. Um, Neonics, we'll go with that. Um, in trying to preserve some ash trees. I had no idea whether that was true, but I figured I'd look into it. I can't imagine that Kent will oppose the bill because of you know somebody using that once once upon a time. Um, but I didn't know; I wasn't aware of the effort that he was talking about. But he did. Your he name was uh, dropped. He said specimen trees, um, and I'm not sure he specifically said ash trees, but he specifically no, he did, did say, say ash trees. Oh, he did. I thought yeah. I might have read into it yeah. as ash. Arborists use it to uh, try to save ash trees. So, so I didn't know if it was Yos. You might know the Park and Rec has been trying to. They've been contacting Bartlett and and in a contract with some trees at somewhere. But I don't know much about what they've been contracting with. Hmm. So yeah, I don't no, know I don't whether know. that's an issue. But I haven't heard any broad. I mean, it definitely is in use on occasion, but our impression overall is that it's not in use that much and it wouldn't be that big a deal to eliminate it. Um, and the testimony in terms of what it does for two pollinators among, you know, is a pretty powerful. Um, and the last one is also known as the Green Snow Program, I believe. Um, and that has a lot of bipartisan support as well. Uh, I heard a lot of, uh, you know, Democrats and Republicans testify in favor of this one. So, because it it has pretty broad effect um, damage. Is that stuff on the roads? Is that what that means? Green snow. Yes. 
Yeah. No, Green Snow well, Pro is the name of a program that teaches municipal. Yeah, that I know about. Yes, that was what you had emailed us about, uh, Wendy, and I thought it was really interesting that there's a, a bill before the Environment Committee to uh, to get it back on the program. Because Maria, we'd heard about this, I don't know, maybe like three years ago. Uh, it had been done in New Hampshire. Uh, everyone raved about it. it. Seemed like it was pretty effective, and it was supposed to come to Connecticut. And for some reason, they weren't able to do the program. So, you know, we got all excited and we're going to push it here in Kent, but it wasn't, in fact, being offered. And so to have it available again, I think would be really terrific, uh, especially as, you know, there was somebody who testified at that hearing on Monday about how they go out their door and they see the piles of salt in the middle of the road and it upsets them. And, uh, you know, we see that here. We get com uh, questions all the time. Wait, about was the that person Wendy? <laughs> Didn't Wendy go out and taste the salt in the middle of the road? <laughs> Did you testify, Wendy? Come on. Uh, but it wasn't Wendy who testified. And, uh, and you know, they use a mix now uh, and they use some sort of a pretreatment that has water, you know, has a liquid. It's a, a combination of liquid and salt. And they've used something that uses some, you know, you know, has some mulch mixed into it. It's hard to know. Uh, and it's really hard for um, the people conducting our road maintenance to, uh, you know, to make a decision that is not with the priority placed first on public safety, right? So public safety is always gotta to be top of mind, but if there is a program that can help people navigate all of these things and still ensure public safety while making better choices, then um, it would be great to have that available again. This, this bill also gives liability pro uh, protection to applicators, because I think they've probably been worried about that if something happens because they use less salt or whatever. But this, yes. this bill would protect them from that if they do it in a um, in a proper manner. So I think that's- I'm glad perfect. you raised that because there was some questions raised about whether, whether that means that the liability would then accrue to the municipality um, and whether it would end up costing towns more. Um, I wasn't, it wasn't a lot about that, but somebody raised that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it does. Uh, I don't think so either. No, no, the town is protected. All right, well. Thank you so much, Maria, for coming <laughs> and talking to us and giving us some time. Nice to see your faces. <laughs> Sounds like you're pretty okay. busy. Um, it, is, it, is a, it is a crazy busy season. It's a kind of irrational job. But then again, you all multitask too. So it's not anything that we don't all do in our lives. <laughs> I can't believe how many bills are in the hopper for a short I, session. I think it must happen every year. You know, we all say, oh, it's a short session. There should be fewer bills. And then we look at it and there are a lot of bills. I mean, some of us. So many. <laughs> yeah, so many. I mean, I, I think I we like limited so things in my committee a little bit more, but certainly are a lot. Of it. And so, yeah, the real time constraint will be, you know, there just aren't that many session days. And so we're just not going to have time to pass stuff. So, so maybe it'll mean that things are teed up for next year, but I really so enjoy your Thursday updates. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> My Thursday updates have, have sometimes become Friday updates. So <laughs> uh, it's hard to know when, when the moment is right to send that out, but I'll try to do it again tomorrow. I, I put in All the right. chat just some resources. I was reading less than a week ago. It was like three days ago about, um, tree trimming because I guess it was, I was working on the newsletter and there was a whole bunch of stuff about their, they mentioned the right tree, right place um, program. And so I just put them in the chat if anybody's interested. Nice. I don't know if they ended up properly as three different links. I can't tell, um, well, but yeah, on Eversource's website. Just oddly enough, <laughs> or happily, a happy surprise. Is the right tree, right place movement taking into account native trees? Does anybody know? Um, it depends who you ask, Carol. I think you know. I, I think it's a it's a good effort to help people, uh, you know, sort out the various balancing acts that people have to do. 
around trees. I think this is more about the size of the tree and so. I, th I, I mean, there are legitimate safety issues. Biddy, yeah. just yeah. check. I sent you an email about a music program Wendy. tomorrow. Wendy. Yeah, yeah. I got it. I got okay. it, Wendy. All right. I mean, I don't know if you guys have more on your agenda, but if you don't have another question for me, I'm going to sign off. We thank you so very much. And <laughs> let us know if there's anything that we can do to help to move anything that has the real potential of getting through forward. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll try to handicap these and I'll be in touch. All right. Great. Thanks. All right. Leo. Good night, everybody. Bye. All right. I'm sure everyone's got an item of new business to raise. No way. Sure. <laughs> I don't think there's any new business. At this time of night, no. There is no correspondence. And I even checked. Oh, good. So, uh, at this time, if there's nothing further for us to do, then we will adjourn the meeting at 9.28 p.m. Motion to adjourn. Thank you all for your patience. Second. I think we got some good business done tonight, though, and I really appreciate your time. Okay. Good night. Okay. Good night, all. Good night.